All right, so uh, this weekend I picked up a BGW Professional Power Amplifier Model 350A. I've actually never seen this model before, but um, this brand is pretty well known in, in the uh, professional uh, amplification market. So studios, uh, movie theaters, um, places like that. So this amp, I believe, puts out probably 175 a channel, if I'd had to guess. I don't, there's not a whole lot online about this particular model. Uh, there's a 350 that seems to be somewhat popular, but it doesn't have the meters like this one does. So what's interesting about this is that kind of the meters went by the wayside by this point, um, but this amp still has them, and it was actually made in 1997. So uh, it's kind of the best of both worlds in terms of the old school build quality, but much newer parts and upgraded circuitry compared to um, what you'd find in something from the 70s. Uh, this amp was plugged into some Westlake Audio uh, BBSM4s, which I'll probably review at some point later once I've cleaned them up a little bit. And um, it sounded like nothing, which is exactly what you want. So, um, you know, no coloration, just a very neutral sounding amp, which is why they're popular in these sort of professional settings. So, uh, just wanted to kind of show you it. I'm going to list this for sale. Don't need another amp. But uh, this is kind of a cool unit, given it's pretty rare. Serial number is very low. And uh, I've got the top cover unscrewed. And I'll just go ahead and show you the inside of it and give you some of my thoughts on the build quality. Sorry for this uh, shaking here, but we're gonna do the best we can uh, just to do one shot here. So I'm gonna move the cover carefully. Get that out of the way. And now we're looking at a uh, very close-up of the interior while I set this down. Okay, so here we go. So big old power transformer sitting in the middle. Um, looks like uh, your, your uh, driver boards on both sides. Not sure how many output transistors there are, um, but it's all very clean, serviceable. Great thing about BGW is they are still in business so if you need to have this serviced you can take it to them instead of uh, a tech who probably doesn't know how to fix something like this sorry techs out there but uh, this is a little more complicated than most of the old school amps from the uh, 70s so pretty much uh, mirror images on uh, both sides nice big uh, cans 20,000 microfarad each so you got plenty of uh, power, plenty of reserve, uh, very nice uh, transformer with the copper um, strapping across it. Um, caps all look good. This is uh, from 1997, as I mentioned previously. So you should be able to get away with using this as it is for some time without having to replace any parts. I did notice this interesting little um, spot here, which uh, clearly Hasn't been a uh, trouble, but uh, yeah, they missed a soldering point. You can see that moving. So I will touch that up. But beyond that, I um, think everything's fine. But uh, that is really interesting because um, I believe that's like the dead man's uh, uh, capacitor. So that's uh, kind of not a good thing that that is not soldered in correctly. Um, let's go to the front. You can see all of the LEDs um, that there are for the power meter. Um, you have your left gain and your right gain, and this is one of my favorite features of the, these BGW amps. Real, real high quality pots in these. They feel real nice. Lots of weight to them. Aluminum knobs uh, throughout. And uh, this nice uh, solid aluminum faceplate, beveled. Um, and then um, plastic covering and they actually went ahead and uh, sealed around that so no dust gets into the into the uh, onto the meter um, in between the faceplate and the chassis but interestingly enough I'm not sure if this is because of the weight of this thing hanging in a rack but uh, the faceplate's slightly bent and so it's caused the um, as you can see it gives it's caused the uh, faceplate to pull away a little bit um, so maybe the adhesive um, between the, the pieces of foam is enough to hold it in. I'm not sure. 
but uh, it's 25 years old almost, um, so this foam is deteriorated. So um, I'm going to leave it as is because I don't have any foam to go ahead and replace this, but it's just standard foam that you'd use for sealing something. Um, you can get it at Home Depot if you needed. But anyway, um, very clean, just a couple of nicks on the face plate. Otherwise, uh, the interior is literally like brand new. Um, and the reason for that is that there's no vents in the cover. So uh, they must have, this amp must not run very hot or you would uh, expect there would be um, vents. There's some nice, obviously big heat sinks here, um, but usually you'd find some vents in the top cover at very least, but there are no vents anywhere in this unit, which means a beautifully, perfectly clean interior. So I think that about uh, does it. Um, I'll flip on the power switch, it's not plugged in, but it all functions and sounds good. Uh, I love BGW amps. If you want something um, that's high power that you can use um, with both vintage and uh, new equipment, really look no further because uh, BGW has a huge advantage in being that they're still in business and can service their gear um, and also make still damn good products. So uh, as always, please, uh, if you like this kind of content, I post it often and uh, trying to post more and uh, subscribe, please, helps me, helps this get further up in the results so people can see uh, unique things. I don't make any money off of this, but uh, when you kind of spend time recording and editing and uploading, it's nice to have uh, people seeing what you make. Any questions? Uh, Put them in the comments. I try my best to answer everything that I can.